Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to show you how to create a liquid text effect in Adobe After Effects. I've already made this video in Adobe Photoshop, so if you guys are just looking to make a graphic, make sure to check out that video, it'll be in the description. This video is heavily inspired by Mishko who popularized this effect. I've started to see this a lot on Instagram, so I thought I'd make a video on it. I haven't seen a proper tutorial on how to do this uh, properly. I don't even know if I'm doing it properly myself, but I thought I'd give it a shot. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and also check out the description for a template of this effect. So you can actually open up this project file in After Effects and just adjust your text and it automatically applies these effects. So if you guys enjoy, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and let's just get straight into it. So right here we have the template, but we're going to actually make a new one. Um, so we're going to go to file, new, new project. I'm going to make um, the duration 10 seconds and I'm going to make it 920 by 1080. So the first thing you want to do is you want to right click and press new um, text. So I'm just going to call it like create or something, um, a random word. And we're going to align it in the middle vertically and horizontally. So if you don't see this um, align panel, you can go to window align and it should be there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. We're going to pre-compose this layer and whenever we're pre-composing any layer, you want to move all the attributes into the new composition. Now we want to go to effects and presets. We want to search up scale wipe. So scale wipe is actually what creates this effect. So we want to drag it on and basically um, you want to select the center point. So this is where where the effect starts. So if you increase the stretch effect, you can see what happens. Um, right now it's at 50 degrees. We want it at zero degrees. And so you can see if I decrease uh, below zero, I think it goes to negative 100. But if it's above zero to 100, you can see what it does. So I'm gonna move the center point because it's sort of in the middle. I want it at like the bottom of the text because I don't want like half the word to be covered like this. So maybe something like this would work. So basically we're gonna set keyframes so that there's gonna be a constant stretch. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go into effects, CC scale wipe, and for stretch at the beginning, you want it at zero. In around two seconds, you want it at negative 100 or 100, it doesn't really matter. So you can see what that does. The issue with this, however, is after it's done, it's just static. So what we want is you want like an ongoing process where we're going to have multiple copies of this and toward the end of every single copy, there's going to be another one that overlays on top of it. So it looks like there's like a constant flow, um, even if there isn't. So what we're going to do is for every single layer, it's going to fade out around the time that the animation ends. So the animation essentially ends like right here. You can't really see it do anything else after this point. So I'm going to say around 1.5 seconds, we're going to fade out this um, text layer. So you can press on T and it'll show up the opacity. So I'm going to say it's going to take around one second to fade out. So right now there's a keyframe at 100% opacity and we're going to make another one at 0%. So basically it just fades out. So what this does is if we make a copy of this layer, so we can press Control C, Control V press U to check the keyframes. So you can see the stretch effect happens right at the beginning. So right when it's fading out, there's gonna be another layer that pops in. We might want it to appear around the same time it starts to fade out. So I think that's good. The only issue is it sort of just appears, like it doesn't fade in. So we're gonna have to fade this in as well. So we're going to set a keyframe for 100, move it so that like it takes half a second to fade in and we're going to set the beginning at zero. So now it fades in and it fades out. And we're going to repeat this process. So I'm going to press control C, control V, and I'm going to press T to show the keyframe. So it's a little bit easier for me to line it up. So basically what you want to do is you just want to move the new layer, uh, whatever you make a copy, you want to move the first keyframe above the third keyframe of the previous one. 
because this keyframe is when it starts to fade out and this keyframe is when it starts to fade in. So every time you copy and paste, you want to press T to show the keyframes. Just move the first one in front of the third one and you should be good. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but I'm not that proficient in After Effects. So yeah, so we're basically done it. So you can see there's like a constant flow. And basically we're going to add some um, other movement and motion to the text later on so that it isn't just like this. So there's sort of like more dynamic elements to it. And then once you're done that, you want to just highlight everything. So you can press Control A. You can right click and press pre compose. And then we can move all the attributes into a new composition. Now what we want to do is we want to sort of create different colors. Um, the top layer is going to be white in this case, so it's easier to read. So I'm just going to copy and paste this maybe three different times and we're going to work with these three bottom layers. Um, all we're going to do is basically just fill in the color. So if you search up fill and just drop it onto each layer. So this one's going to be red. This one's going to be blue maybe. And the last one's going to be pink. And we're going to highlight the bottom three and press P and it'll adjust the position. And we're going to slightly shift them so you can see each color. So right here, you can see each color and it looks fine. And now we're going to pre-compose all of these. And we're just going to work with that now. What you may notice is there's sort of like no distinction between the flow of the line and the text is sort of like joints. So what we might want to do is we want to switch around the layers so that um, the text is white, but maybe the scale wipe isn't white. So what we could do is we could go to the beginning, copy and paste just the original text layer. So we just hide it. It's just no animation. And we can move the white um, scale wipe layer to maybe the bottom. So now you can see like there's a red layer. I'm just going to slightly position this so it matches up a little bit better. But now what this does is just like a clear distinction between the flow and the actual text because there's sort of like a hard edge at the bottom. So what we could do is we can apply VR glow to the text layer. So it's a bit softer. Uh, before you do that, you want to pre-compose the layer and you want to apply and then you want to apply it. So you can copy my settings. I'm sort of just choosing some random ones. And what we could also do is we can pre-compose all the scale wipe layers and we can uh, blur it out. So if we go to fast uh, box blur, we can create a slight blur. And by doing this, we can uh, decrease the glow of the text layer at the top a little bit. So now it's a little bit more unified because there's a lot of glow um, and blur to it. And basically now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose it again and we're going to animate the entire thing again. So we're going to pre-compose and now we're going to go into turbulent displace. And to make it look a little bit more flowy and liquid, we can um, change the turbulent displace evolution. So you can see what that does, right? So when it flows, it flows in a weird state, um, but not too much. So I'm going to decrease the amount to maybe like 10. And as you can see, the evolution doesn't uh, go by itself. You're going to have to set keyframes. But to make it random, what you can do is you can hold alt and click on the stopwatch icon and then you can go and type in time asterisk um, maybe 20. The higher the number, the faster the animation. So 20, you can see barely does anything. I'm going to make it maybe 50 so you guys can see a visible difference. I'm also going to add a wave warp so that there's a bit more motion as well. So if you can see what wave warp does, um, it does this, except I'm going to make it much more subtle. So the wave height won't be 10. You can see the more you increase it, the stronger the effect. I'm going to make it around one. You can see if you increase the phase, what that does. I'm going to make the direction zero and I'm going to increase the wave width a little bit. 
And instead of having the wave type as sign, I'm going to make it noise. So you can see now um, as you move it, there's sort of like noise going up and down. So it gives like a retro TV look, um, which I like. So once again, you can hold alt and click on the stopwatch for phase this time instead of evolution. And you can type in time asterisk uh, something faster like 600. So you can see it's constantly moving now, which in my opinion looks really, really cool. Obviously this sort of mimics uh, Mishko. Um, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this to sort of show you how to replicate his type of look, but you obviously don't have to do that. I'm going to switch it back to maybe like 500. And what I'm going to do is I noticed that the crate layer is still a little bit too out there. Like the, you can sort of still see the edge even with the glow. So what I might do is duplicate this layer, um, search up blur. So maybe like Gaussian blur, place it on the duplicated layer. So right now you can't see it because it's under. So I'm just going to put it on top. We're going to increase the blur. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the top part so you can see it, but the bottom will continue to be blurry. So you can do this by selecting on a shape tool. So I'm going to choose ellipse. I'm going to create a ellipse for the upper half and we're going to invert it. So you can see the bottom half has the blur, but the top doesn't. And we're going to increase the feather a little bit. You might also want to disable VR glow um, for one of the layers because there's going to be too much glow. But yeah, this is a way you can make the bottom part softer. So it's a smoother flow between the letters and the animation. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to hue and saturation, cycle through the colors to see if there's anything else I like. And similar to what I did before, I'm going to add the blur to the bottom half. So I'm going to pre-combose this layer, move all the attributes. Now you can copy and paste this, apply Gaussian blur or any type of blur, and you can mask out the top once again. And you can invert it. Go to mask and then increase the feather. And now what you have is the final product. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. I'm going to leave a link to other After Effects tutorials I made in the past. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.